Tonight on News Extra, a portrait of a killer. Paintings and diaries that provide a frightening view inside the mind of the worst mass killer in American history, John Wayne Gacy. Tonight, Gacy talks exclusively to our Walter Jacobson and reveals a part of his life that most of us have never seen. Walter? Linda, there are personality traits that are common to mass killers, including arrogance and cunning, and enough cleverness to kill many times without getting caught. John Gacy has all those traits, and then some. He was a Kentucky colonel, and a husband and a father of five children, and an actor dressed as a clown. John Gacy loves clowns. To me, clowning was a way of relaxation for me. You regressed into childhood, you were able to relax, and you could be uh, goofy if you wanted to, and still you had the facade of your face being covered. The clown suit hid his face and his evil crimes as well. Even today, on death row, he's painting portraits of himself as a clown. The 33 Flavors Clown and the convicted killer of 33 can't help but chuckle at the irony. I used to do clowning, and I don't know if you want to mention the name, for an ice cream company in Chicago who had 33 flavors. I used to, I'm serious, Bressler Ice Cream Company. I was their contractor and I was also their clown. And Pogo the Clown was the clowning that I did for charity hospital work for the Democratic Party. And, that, and Pogo the Clown is originally, Pogo comes from being Polish and on the go all the time. So it's Pogo. <laughs> on the go for Democrats as Norwood Park Committeeman. A visit with Rosalind Carter, the first lady during the Carter administration. Gacy right here is hiding the fact that there are bodies buried under his house. He's the great deceiver. I always felt that service to community and community service to others, you know, in my religious background, I felt if you serve other people, it, it'll come back to serve you. You know, I've always believed that way with generosity. So if he looks for good and he's generous, why did he kill 33 people? Nobody knows, but the psychiatrists talk about how obsessive and meticulous he is, enough to kill repeatedly and to stack his victims in a careful and ordered manner like cordwood under his house. Even now, he's obsessed and meticulous with his life. What's your life like? Day to day. Mm -hmm. I live it day to day. What do you mean? If you want to know what my life is like, I log it every day. For the last 12 years, all you got to do is ask. I can tell you everything. I can tell you it's the first meal they serve me here because I do it daily. What do you do all Every phone call, everything that I do, every time an officer's around me is logged. Every movement that I make is in the book here. And he and his lawyers have a log on his victims, too. Everything they did before they were killed. You know, when I tell you, I, I've got background information on it. We took each, each one of them by, uh, we took each one of the victims. And this is, this is by, by their names or by their indictment numbers. And what we did with each one of them, we did profile sheets on them. We wanted to know what, what this kid was into, what his background was. Chicago psychiatrist Daniel Johanna of Northwestern University spent a few hours this week screening the interview. He's very attentive to all details, and so he's sort of, uh, uh, that's the way that he operates. And that's how, that's how uh, people like him are able to cover up these, do these crimes and cover them up because they are well planned and organized. One thing John Wayne Gacy could not plan was the way he got that way. My dad was domineering in the fact he had a different set of values, but also a very stern individual. My dad drank a lot, and when he drank a lot, yeah, he was abusive to my mother and to me. But I never swung at my dad because I loved him for what he stood for. Maybe that's where it began to go wrong for John Gacy. He doesn't know, nor does he seem to care. He loses himself in his paintings. Why the skeleton? This was done by request. Somebody requested uh, a skull clown, and... Uh, Mostly the punk rockers and, and the undergrounders like that stuff there. This is Christ as I see him in myself. And it's monolithic because Christ, to me, is monolithic. He, he's all things to all people. This here is the, uh, the High Ho series, and, th and that is uh, self-explanatory. It's the Seven Dwarfs. And they've always stuck to me as a, as a great child painting. And so I've done a series of High Ho series paintings. And this is a 1990 one. This is called Hi-Ho Around the Campfire. It's, it's an original work. Walt Disney is a mentor 
for me because I, I've always enjoyed history, creativity, and the uh, the seven dwarfs. If you actually look at all the faces, they represent uh, the the seven different moods that most people can get into. Moods are important to John Gacy. He has so many of them himself. Angry ones, mostly, toward his father and his victims, and especially, it seems, toward the victims' families, who are constantly reminding him of his crimes. That one mother that gets on television all the time who thinks I should be uh, given 33 injections, I think she ought to take 33 Valiums and go lay down. She goes on Geraldo's show and all these other shows talking about, uh, I think it's Maori, I think is the name. Her marine son. Her marine son, if her marine son was so great, what the hell did he run away from home 12 times? As callous and as cunning as he is, John Wayne Gacy talks about his victim. 